pandemic, I have been doing art to cope with boredom. I appreciate the extra time to be creative and work on my passion. It all makes me excited. As a self-taught welder, I'm practicing the craft. As a printmaker, I'm developing new prints, welding frames, and creating 3D lamps, just like the ones behind me. The pandemic is a challenging one, but art has been my savior. And welcome to the TTT News Special. I'm DK Roster. We are speaking with Jemima Charles, who is an Afro-Caribbean artist born in Trinidad and Tobago. She first came to my attention because of the How Do You Cope installment that you just saw. She joins us now to give us more insight into her life and work. How are you doing, Jemima? Hi, I'm great. Thanks for having me. Our supreme pleasure. Being positive during this pandemic, what are some of the things, I mean, because we would have just seen some of the things that you're involved in, but yes. welding, where, 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 where that come from? Is that a new thing? Is that an old thing? What are some of it's, those things that you've been doing? It's a new thing. I've been practicing welding for the past year. I would say I started April last year. My first attempt at welding was the day that the France um, Notre Dame Cathedral caught on fire. And I was really concerned about my welding ability and with the fire of that and then the heat of the welding. When, it, when my first metal pieces stuck, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so, I'm sorry for the cathedral, but I can weld. <laughs> and I actually dedicated a piece to the cathedral because of that experience. Jemima, for a second, you make me feel that is you, but not the thing you know. The way, the way you link it so strongly. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate that it happened there. But for me, it was something that was also giving me what I would say the encouragement or I don't know how it linked so, so closely. It, it, just, it just happened. But speaking about that encouragement, what are some of the encouragements or the words or the people behind your career choices leading up to school at SCAD? Um, at the University of the West Indies, I met some great lecturers as in my undergraduate studies. Um, my mother, my mother is a seamstress, um, young parents. My mom was a teenage, had teenage pregnancy. She got pregnant at 15. I have five brothers and they've always used their hand to survive. So the influence started at home first. Then they encouraged me to go to university to pursue my career as an artist. And in the undergraduate studies, I, um, I met some excellent lecturers there who inspired me. Um, Sarah, um, Anna Serrao is one of the lecturers coming to mind right now. And in one of her classes, I had a, a paper project and the paper project led me to Japan to pursue an inter, in, uh, an apprenticeship in Japan. And after returning from Japan in the apprenticeship, I became a teacher after I graduated from the university. Yes, that's the, the, the Nabuta Street Festival. Um, you're seeing images of the work. I actually assisted with creating that piece. So the love for paper started in my undergraduate studies at the university. When I returned, I had a thesis show. I created um, a sculptural lamp. It was sort of like the Shaconia in a sense, um, but after that, I started teaching. And I took my students to a career fair and the person there said, you know, you, then you're an artist. You should apply for a SCAD scholarship. And I, I applied and I got 50% scholarship to SCAD. It was really challenging because coming from a parent that did, did not have a lot of financial, they, they, we were struggling at the time. so. I saved a lot. I got 50% scholarship. I went, I worked my tail off and I got additional scholarships and I returned home. And I had my first show, the images you just saw were of my first solo show 
um, at the Art Society of Trinidad and Tobago in 2019. And I want to dive back into some of that, that work in Japan because some people say that it is good or their learning style, they can sit and learn and, or see somebody do it. But how important was that apprenticeship for you to literally sit at the feet of masters, master. teachers, so that you can better stand on their shoulders? It was, it was amazing. Um, I would say to everybody, if you can get to do an apprenticeship, um, take the opportunity. Again, that time I was a young person um, struggling to learn, to survive, to get the money to go. I had an exhibition and my exhibition, I sold $17,000 to get to that apprenticeship. Um, and $17,000 worth of art and, and, and contribution from local people in, the, in society for support to me to go to, to that apprenticeship. And it changed my life, not only experiencing another culture, but experiencing and the way artists work, how communities come together in a camp, just similar to our mass camp. They have a festival camp. And the skills that I gained there, not just physical, but the skills of survival and communicating and being an ambassador for Trinidad and Tobago, actually, because they wanted to know the humidity level, what percentage of the equator your 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 and what, what is, how far is Trinidad and Tobago from the equator? So I was an ambassador. So you learn, you build, not just with um, your hands, but as a person. And I think, and I want, actually want to use this as an opportunity just to plug what we have here in terms of mentorship with the masters. It is a fabulous yes. opportunity whenever the opportunity comes again. If you can, yes. uh, whoever is looking, listening to this, is something I think you should dive into with both hands and all of your heart. But some okay. artists, Jemima, try to yes. defy an easy initial description. They say, like, you can't define me or you can't define my artistry. But you call your aesthetic culturally integrated neo-Caribbean art. Expand yeah. that definition for me, please. It all goes back again to the apprenticeship. Um, it started as when I was there, they wanted to know who I am, where I'm from. I'm from Africa. And then I had to explain to them, you know, you're coming to the Caribbean, you know, Jamaica, Bob Mali. Yes. Do you know Trinidad and Tobago steel pan? Yes, because we actually have an influence in the steel pan in Japan. So I had to break it down to them and then they came to, straight to Trinidad. And they asked me so much about my identity. And as a Caribbean woman, that I, when I returned, I started exploring my Caribbean identity. So even in SCAD in Atlanta, they asked me so much about my identity that I, I, I infused my work into my Caribbean aesthetic, my Caribbean identity. And then I started expanding it into cultural um, identities. We have so many cultures in Trinidad and Tobago that I couldn't settle on one. So I infuse um, the culture of the Japanese experience. I infuse Trinidad local ex cultural experiences that is so influential in so many linkages. So my work has cultural linkages. And in the work, you would see a king head. It's like an elongated head. This elongated head is, an, is an, a symbol of my identity. Um, because when I started going into my cultural identity, yes, you'll see images of the head, you'll see images of masks, you'll see in it images of people being crowned with the king and queen head. It's a representation of accepting your identity. It's, a, it's, it's accepting your culture. It's be, you're crowning yourself. Yeah, so the work you're seeing now is from the Art Society show. And every piece has a mask, a crown, or a head within it as a symbol of cultural integration. And that is something that we wanted to, to dive into a little more on the other side of the break in terms of how it is you articulate uh, headship, storytelling, connectivity, layering, and light. We continue this conversation with you, Jemima Charles, when we return. Stay with us. Welcome back. We are speaking with artist Jemima Charles. 
No, on the other side of the break, we were just talking about the apprenticeship in Japan, the significance of that, the fact that conversations, interaction, engagements in Japan forced Jemima to actually look at herself and see who she was, interrogate her identity. And this leads us to some of those factors, uh, the media, the way that you bring your aesthetic to life. Now, Jemima, some of the things that I would have just listed out in terms of those keywords, headship, storytelling, layering, connectivity, light, how important are they to what it is you do? And uh, if those were the headings, give me a little verse and chapter after each of them. Thank you. Um, I would say that these key five keywords developed over a course of years. Um, connectivity is where I link my work to the viewer. I believe that the viewer assists in completing my piece. They have to interact with the work. For example, I went out to Carnival in 2019 and I crowned whoever wanted to be crowned in society. And you'll see images of that. And it's basically viewer connecting to my pieces. Light, light is a reflection. It's a bridge between present, past, my, my history and future. So the light is a projection and a reflection. Layering, if you look at my pieces, they're layered. It's printmaking, the technique is printmaking where I actually produce a surface and then I would create lino blocks, create carvings out of the blocks and print on paper. So it's a layering and layering of prints on top of the paper. Then I would weld the frame and, and apply the skin. I call my print the skin. So that is where the layering comes in the multiple techniques and methods to come up with one final piece. Storytelling, we grew up, in, I mean, in Trinidad, our parents, we love to talk. We love to talk. So I tell stories through my work. Um, I produce books as well as a printmaker. So my favorite book is the book of the um, carnival character. Um, the, the, the one who tells the most stories is Haragonad. He is the one who's, who orates, you know? So, the storytelling is of the history of the culture of Trinidad and Tobago. Headship is another word, um, and that goes back to the identity and connecting to your identity and embracing yourself, whichever self you identify with. And um, I think I, I touched on all those five words there, but it came over some years, a period of time. It's not just like I woke up and this is what I came up with. It, it happened from the connecting with someone to go to Japan, connecting with someone to go do my master's, making connections to be where I am today. And connections to have in this conversation, which I'm very enthused about. Now, when we say SCAD, <laughs> we're talking about the Savannah College of Art and Design. Now, yes. reading up a little bit, it's, you have an MFA in print making. What goes into I making a print? <laughs> and I mean, you just gave me an idea there, but is it that you get a vision or you look at what's available and say, okay, well, this might be an interesting shape. Let's do this. Um, my work is, it has different types of prints. There's monoprinting where you can use um, a single um, bamboo. I, when I started printing, I used to use bamboo and glass. I would remove ink on the glass and then press it onto paper. And then I graduated into wood cuts. So you would carve wood and then you would print it. I think I sent you an image where um, th there's a lino cut of a crown and then the print of it. So when you're working with the prints and when I'm starting my pieces, the first thing comes to head is a visual. I just, it's an idea, a concept. So I'm a conceptual artist as well. So I have an idea and then I would draw it and then sculpt it and produce it. This, this piece is actually um, of my thesis show where I had um, lights. So right now, let's go to what I'm working on right now. Please. I have a show coming up at Horizons Art Gallery. I, ca I can't share images of those pieces as yet for contractual reasons because it's, it's going to be revealed for the show. But this show is, Total local. 
with the pandemic and having to be home and not being able to travel, I decided to focus on local. So one of my pieces would be a pan lamp. It's a fully, it, the show is entirely on lamps. So it's a pan lamp, an ibis lamp, coconut trees, those sort of local images. So what I would do is I have the idea and the concept. I would then look for images and inspiration. I would go out and take images of palm trees, coconut trees, anything that inspires me locally, draw it or photograph it, then build it. So I hope that I explain to you the process. It's not just I'm sitting and I'm whatever comes. Sometimes it's like that, but a lot of times it's a process. All right, now, Jemima, I want to ask about contact information for people who want to get a better idea of your art and stuff. But before you give me that, I'm also asking if you only work on paper. Because I see some of these prints, and I am thinking about potential links for local designers who want their specific print to showcase their individual aesthetic, and whether or not that Excellent. is something that has been on the horizon or something that you're working with as yet. Excellent. It could be on fabric. It can be on any surface that will take the print. So um, if you want to contact me to assist you with a fashion designer and you want to create a, a print for your fabric to bring out a concept or a particular look, please contact me. We can work together. Um, I don't only do paperwork. I paint as well. But for now, I'm focusing on my sculptural lamps. But if you would like to commission me for a specific concept, feel free to contact me at 487-5033. That's 487-5033, Horizons Art Gallery. What, when, what kind of time frame are we looking at before, before that showing, Jemima? This show was supposed to take place in April of this year. But because of the COVID and the closing down of the galleries and so on, it's been postponed and postponed. But I can't say for sure what is the exact date. But, for, but note, I will inform you and TTD as to the date. <laughs> you can come to see the show or pass through. Thank you so much. But Jemima, do you still teach? I teach. I teach full time. I teach. I just sent off some students to to CSEC, CXC, CSEC, visual arts, and it. I'm so proud of them because in the pandemic it was a challenge. We did online learning, and when we had to come out in February, I was so impressed with the work that they produced, and we pushed really hard. Um, and I lecture part time on UE, visual arts, uh, of course. Um, design. So and how does that make you feel? Because when we started the conversation, you were talking about those lecturers, those teachers that made a difference. Do you feel yeah. it's a responsibility to kind of pass that on? Because many times when people think about teachers, they think about somebody who's just going to uh, give them the skills so that they can go and get employed, as opposed to <laughs> stretch themselves and see what they can be in this world. I mean, it's, it's rewarding to be a teacher, and it's not a cliche rewarding. I change lives and they change my life. I encourage them to go forward and not just be a, a, an employer or an employee, sorry. I teach them that they are creative. They can, pro, they can create a job. They can create their opportunities. They do not quit. Don't give up. Art is not easy. And if you have a passion, follow your passion. It may not be art only. So when students come to me in Form 1 who are not doing CSEC, I will tell them whatever your passion is, go pursue that passion because it was not easy for me. So I'm giving them real life experiences. And it's not just when because I'm you're dealing with the lamps at this point in time, we want to thank you for sharing your light. But thank you very okay. much, Jemima Charles. And we want to thank you on behalf of the entire news team for tuning into the TTT News Special.